the next thing to fix in this Fluke 8600 multimeter is why is it not switching ranges correctly? I've already um, fixed a problem with the bad socket. Um, there's another socket here. Um, the bad socket on the clock generator chip. That's now working. But I was playing around with the range selection and it didn't want to select ranges. It was not auto ranging in the auto mode. It wasn't moving the decimal point on the display. And it did auto range when it was set to one of the manual range modes. That That's not right. Something's wrong with the range selection. So I had a look around on the board. I've taken out a couple of or three daughter boards, which are connected with range selection. Um, one of them is the input selector board. This is it. So this thing has got read relays and they will switch on uh, the reading readers down the middle as a coil around it. They switch on when you energize the coil and they close the read contact and you can just hear them ting slightly when they do that. And so that's what's selecting the ranges. There's precision resistors in this potted module here. The input divider board connects to the main board and another read there. You can see there's some, some guard tracks on the board there and some high impedance nodes. This is all to do with the input range selection. This isn't switching on and off properly. Why not? Um, another board we've got over here, which is the the ohms board. This is the ohms converter. There's a, a chip on there, probably an op amp. Again, connectors to the main board. Another read relay. That'll switch on and off when we go into ohms. Fantastic. Uh, you can't see much of the AC adapter board because it's got a screen over it. There's the screen, rather dull. Um, underneath there, those green things, yeah, more read relays. They'll switch on and off when you change range. There's the connector. There's some tantalum capacitors there, which I'm a bit suspicious about. But all of this is controlled, if you have a look at the schematic, all this stuff is controlled by a ROM. Uh, there is the main uh, DVM chip. But over here, U9 ROM, a logical three pole double throw switch. That's a CMOS multiplexer. ROM, hmm, relay transistor fed directly from the ROM. That ROM is at the heart of the range switching. There's the switches on the front panel. That ROM is at the heart of the range switching. Let's have a look at that ROM. Well, I took it out of the socket because, and honestly, I thought maybe it's not a bad socket. That's the socket that the ROM ought to be in. You can see the pins here, which connect to the daughter boards. And there's the ROM socket, all the tracks on the main board. I reseated that chip in the socket and it clicked slightly. Well, I know why now. It wasn't just badly fitting in the socket. There's the ROM. Oh dear. We're missing some pins on this thing. It's not... Um, Not in very good shape. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. That's that's actually pin 13 missing there. Around the front, there's pin 1 missing. And pin 3 is quite bent. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Now, the reason why it's so bad is that those pins are not only somewhat bent, they're also corroded by virtue of being close to the batteries. This is a battery powered multimeter, it has the battery option. And the 1975 vintage NICAD batteries have leaked. Not badly, they haven't made a real mess in there, but they have leaked. And I think the reason for these pins being so corroded, and of course they've snapped off, uh, the reason for that corrosion is due to the chemical effect of the batteries. 
Uh, the batteries are quite close by. If we have a look at the board, there's the ROM socket and there's the battery terminal. Uh, battery fits in here, there's a cell there, you can see the labelling. Um, so we're pretty close by, there's dirt, there's corrosion on some of these daughterboard pins. Um, but yeah, we've got a problem now because what I really prefer to do, of course, is replace that ROM um, with a new one. But now this is date coded 1976. Um, I believe you can get replacement parts for these things. Um, it's part number uh, 376061. Fantastic. You can, I believe, get them. It's only a 7488 uh, bipolar prom, programmed, of course, with a particular um, pattern, a particular um, binary um, data pattern. So I could put this in a prom reader and then mended those pins somehow. Um, blow a new prom and put that in. Well, I could. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is soldering this down to a dill header so that that dill header will have good, probably gold-plated pins and then we'll have to put that chip and header into a socket. Now, the pieces of metal that broke off from those pins are probably still in the, the holes in this socket and I don't trust the the condition of the socket anyway. So I really need to remove this socket. I have to desolder the socket from the board and having desoldered it, put a new one in, a, a, a modern, probably a turn pin socket, and then plug the chip, plug the, the, the existing chip on a header into the new socket. Quite a long process, quite a fiddly thing to do, but I think that's the only way we're going to find out what else is wrong with this thing? Uh, once we've sorted out the range selection, I think then we can go on and actually make the thing work.